Hey, welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I am back again for yet another DC Multiverse video, and today I finally friggin' got one of these darn things. Amazon canceled on me twice, never had that, I know a lot of you out there have that problem, never ran into that until now, twice, mind you. In fact, the day that it was supposed to be delivered on the second go-around, they waited until about 5pm to go, yeah, we're not... We're not bringing it. We're just messing with you. Are you still looking at your screen? Sucker. Then, shortly thereafter, I got a couple private messages over on my Instagram of people saying, it's over on Books A Million. And if you live on the West Coast, we don't have Books A Million, but it seems like there's a million and one Books A Million on the East Coast. I put in an order there. Nothing really happened. <laughs> it was like, thanks for your pre-order. Whereas I thought it was in stock. Apparently not. Couple days after that, friend Big Diesel Jones over on my Instagram subscription service. If you've not checked that out, I'll put a link down in the description. It's a monthly subscription to my Instagram. I know, but I do do monthly giveaways. In fact, this month I'll be giving away an entire set of the new Superpowers Wave 6. So you got Hal Jordan, Sinestro, all that jazz, right? So that's not a bad giveaway, if I do say so as myself. So again, if you want to subscribe and do all that jazz on my Instagram, I'll put the link down in the description below. But yes, a quick shout out again to Big Diesel Jones. Gave me the heads up. Best Buy had this. <laughs> I have been going to GameStop, which I just despise going into because I'm usually the only one in that dang store, right? You walk in, it's like instantaneous. What are you looking for? Oh, yeah, I'm just looking. Are you sure I can't help you with anything? Have you heard about the new games? What do you <laughs> It's just like, it makes me want to leave. I'm like, I don't want it. I don't want it. Just leave me alone. Now, with Best Buy, that's kind of like the complete opposite, where it's a giant store. There's nobody in that. And then somebody just greets you at the front. Yeah, yeah, I guess we're still open. Come on into Best Buy. It's a lot of fun. We have lots of TVs in the back and whatnot. Oh, you're here for Wonder Woman. Gotcha. So, put it in order. And that was that a couple days later. Yes, I went to Best Buy and they had her waiting for me at the order pickup. So thanks, Best Buy. Thanks for everything you do. <laughs> what happened to Target and Walmart and Amazon, right? Anyways, took the long route on that. But Wonder Woman, McFarlane Collector's Edition. So it's going to run you that $30 price point if you can still find one. And yes, there's a Platinum Edition, which... It's cool. I don't like the blue wristbands on there, so I'm just going to wait. This one is totally fine for my Wonder Woman needs. You get a nice photo of her on the back. Here's the barcode. Like I said, these are few and far between at this point. And for those of you still wondering, why is this figure so popular? It's because Wonder Woman is very integral to the DC Universe. And we've gotten every other Wonder Woman except for Wonder Woman for our collections. So McFarlane Toys... Heed this, people do like female action figures. Not every female action figure is going to sell as well as Wonder Woman. Okay, let's just keep that in mind. It's nothing against anybody. It's just that's how it goes. But yes, do more. A few here and there, I think that really suits the needs of the wave and the collecting. Trust me on that. Too many, you'll start seeing them sit on the shelves. But anyways... This is definitely an integral part to your DC Multiverse McFarlane Toys collection. And I finally got her. So, we're going to get her all out of the packaging. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the, well, a couple months ago it was brand new and it's taken me that long. The McFarlane Toys Collector's Edition Wonder Woman from the DC Multiverse line. All right, so here is a normal looking Diana Prince out of the packaging. It's been a while since I've been able to say that. We've gotten Dr. Fate Wonder Woman and whatever else Wonder Woman's. They're just terrible. This is finally a good one. Anyways, she comes with a bunch of extra hands. You got punching hands. You've got the, the trigger holding hands, right? Of course she does, because we all know Wonder Woman is known for her heavy assault weapons. America, right? <laughs> Stop giving characters like Wonder Woman trigger holding hands. It making no sense. She also comes with a cool Wonder Woman shield. It's largely all gray plastic. It kind of looks silvery, but it's like a, a it's all gray plastic and it's got a little gold Wonder Woman emblem and she's got the sword. Again, it's got a nice gold hilt and the blade is just a silver plastic. Does it work on the shield and the sword? 
Well, when you get her in hand, even though her hand is a trigger finger hand, which looks weird, yes, she holds both of them really nicely. So if you want more of a warrior type, Amazon type Wonder Woman, look no further. And she also comes with a battle axe, just like the sword. It has a gold hilt. It also has that same silver plastic. It is sculpted well. It looks nice for a sword, for an axe, for a shield. Yes, she holds everything. Same as the sword, same as the axe, same as the shield. Pose are all out. She looks pretty cool, I will say. Now, she does come with her lasso of truth, which is just essentially a piece of string, right? But it works. It's effective. It's a nice long lasso of truth. You could wind it up. It'll be a little tricky to kind of get it all form fitting and then not only doing that, but then putting it in her hands because she really does have some awkward hands and you can't really bendy wire the lasso, right? So in that sense, it's just kind of that. However, it does work really well if you need to tie up a criminal or two like Lex Luthor. So again, it's simplified, but I dig it. And you can get it on her belt. She has a little peg for that. So you can get it nice and tight right there on her wonder belt. Wonder Woman herself. She's a pretty good looking figure. I am going to be honest with you. I like the colors. I like the skin tone. Some of the articulation really stands out because of those pins on flesh. I'm with you guys on a lot of that stuff. However, it's a toy. And then I go, oh, I really don't care that much. It's just kind of supposed to be fun. Front to back, she looks pretty cool. All the metallic colors look great. I like the blue wash in her hair. That really makes her hair pop. And I like when they give characters, especially comic book characters, a blue wash. The head portrait, though, it's okay. It's not my favorite. It's a little off. It's a little on at the same time. But I think you get what I'm saying. It could have been just a little bit better, and I think that she sits a little bit too low with her neck, right? But everything, for the most part, is painted nicely. The white on the red boots could have been done just a little bit better. I like her silver gauntlets, right? She can dodge bullets all day long with those. She's got enough articulation in the head, left, right, up, and down. You get the idea, but I like to pull the head up just a little bit just to give her a little bit more neck because I think it situates entirely too low, right? That looks better, I think. Now, in the arms, at the shoulders, she will have butterfly joints, which looks weird with flesh, right? But at the same time, again, whatever. It's a friggin' toy. It's supposed to look like a toy. It's not gonna look like a real person. The weird thing about her arms is in the biceps. Instead of just normal biceps, they're sculpted biceps, so when you twist them, it leaves edges to the flesh, and that looks weird, right? Everything else, I could forgive the joints if need be. That looks bizarre. She has double jointed elbows, which again, they're not gonna always look the best, but it is what it is. She's got the hands that rotate up, down, left, right. These hands are more so the Maxwell Lord neck breaking hands, right? I guess you could say. She doesn't really have an ab crunch. It's more of a waist, which will twist and kind of move back and forth. So you can get her into some flying positions, but no, it's not the traditional upper diaphragm or ab crunch to her. Her legs will kick out enough rotation, enough momentum, articulation out of it. I think it looks great. And her legs actually look like legs instead of Roman architecture, right? <laughs> Double jointed knees, which again, hey, that's not going to look all too great in the articulation scheme. Nothing at the boots, but she's got the feet up, down, left, right with toes. And like I said, you can get her into some cool flying positions with a flight stand. So that would have been cool to throw that in the box. But I'm just saying you get a DC multiverse stand. She looks A-OK. -okay. And I will say overall, all the nitpicks aside... I like this Wonder Woman figure, and I'm finally happy to have a decent looking Wonder Woman with my DC Multiverse collection. Especially when you want to display her with the Trinity, right? Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. In terms of height, I think of Wonder Woman being the tallest, if not pretty much on par with Superman. Superman, we need to do a little bit better, get him taller. She's taller than Batman, that totally works for me. But yes, as I always see Wonder Woman, she is the tallest of the Trinity. And when you want to see her with other DC superheroes, she will still be the tallest. But Kyle Rayner is just about that size. We all know how DC multiverse scaling goes at this point, but I'm happy to say that Wonder Woman would be the appropriate height across the board. When you want to pair her up with some older Golden Age type figures, 
Yeah, that looks great as well. Her costume is not going to be the golden age. It's more of the modern-ish kind of take, but I think of that as being largely Wonder Woman. And just to show what she looks like with other golden age heroes like Superman and Batman, except this time around, Superman is entirely too short. Batman is entirely too tall. DC multiverse scaling, everybody. We all know how it goes by this point. And just to show you with some villains, right? From Zoom to Brainiac, Black Manta and Lex Luthor. Now, you'll get a little bit bigger figures like Brainiac's a little bit bigger. I could totally see that. Black Manta around the same size. Lex Luthor, he's a little bit too tall. You know what? <laughs> there you go. That's what it looks like. And what I like is that you can get Mongol, who's entirely bigger than Wonder Woman, with Batman and Robin. And for the man who has everything Superman... Why, you can recreate that right on your DC Multiverse shelf. That's pretty cool. So that will wrap it up for my look at the brand new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse, the collector's edition Wonder Woman. At the $30 price point with everything in the box, that is more on par with a collector's edition release. An extra head portrait would have been stellar or even a flight stand. Stellar, perhaps both. Maybe next time. Again, I know people want Wonder Woman. Those that did not grab her, stay steadfast. Don't worry. They see the numbers. There will be eventually another Wonder Woman. So don't pay any exorbitant prices. Just wait until the next one comes out. Hopefully it won't be gold or patina or glow in the dark or whatever else. But you get the idea. So you've heard my thoughts. And now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything Wonder Woman. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, now let's get some Wonder Woman villains going, right? Giganta, Cheetah, all the us. Let's get it going. And when they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.